All right. Uh, Mike Garofolo, NFL Network, says the Niners and Ayuk are not close on a deal. Mm. Um, this is an, ar- an article out there. You know, he went on, Ayuk went on Nightcap, the podcast the other night, I and he it. was asked about where he ranks with the league's wideouts. And I love his answer. He says, I'm worried about championships right now. Championships, championships, championships. I ain't trying to get into who's number one and two and three and four and five. And I, I love that. There's a rumor out there that the Chiefs want to trade for Brandon Ayuk. And there were some people in the chat early on um, that saying that Brett Veach, you know, wants to trade for Brandon Ayuk. Um, I, to me, this would be equally bad to trading Charles Haley to the Cowboys. You don't give the Chiefs would have been on a totally different level than they actually were this year if they had had a Brandon Ayuk. So now you're going to trade them, Brandon Ayuk? No, 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 no. No, I'd rather, I'd rather, I'd rather uh, do anything else. You know, keep them, trade them. Uh, just don't trade them to Kansas City. I mean, and don't trade them to Philadelphia. I mean, it's just simple as that. Uh, this we know this guy can play. We know this guy has a ton of talent. Do not trade him to Kansas City. That's how I see it. How do you see it? I feel the same exact way. Uh... We're going to find out. The Niners always seem to fold to their big guys. So I think I I really think that this conversation isn't about whether or not B.A. is going to get paid. I think B.A. is virtue signaling towards am I one of your guys or not? A lot. That's what I'm hearing. A lot of him saying, like, I don't want to talk about who's the best. I don't want to talk about. I don't want to get caught up in numbers. I don't want to get caught up in production. Everybody here is know what I'm knows what I'm about. You guys have told me that this is a championship organization with championship players. I have I have done that since the day I've got here, even when I'm in the building. I feel like there's a lot of him talking about kind of like I do it the right way here. Like there's a lot of guys who do what they want to do, but I do it the right way. Everybody knows that I told the line. Right. And in a way, you can kind of feel like that's what he's really he's really trying to see what the Niners think about him in the form of dollars. Like, how are you going to take care of me? And he's he's really pushing like this worth element as if he's already expecting the Niners to play around with his worth. And um, truthfully, this is the best he's got. This is his response like this is his weapon because he doesn't have any leverage quite honestly uh the Niners can trade him the Niners can sit on him and just pay him the 14 million this year and then next year for good measure they can even franchise him if they want to so BA really doesn't have any leverage quite honestly and I feel like he's saying what any player would say is just talk about the truth as you see it and that's what he's doing um if the Niners do move on from BA like I said before, I really believe that it's because they could not get it done. Not because they because they didn't want to get it done. Not because they couldn't get it done. I'm sorry. And go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, if I'm predicting the end game on this, because, I mean, here's the thing. I think they're going to get it done. I'm not that concerned about the fact that they're far apart at this point. Uh-huh. But the end game has to be discussed here. Are you going to have an end game where you have 60 or $70 million tied up in three wide receivers and you're, you're a team that likes to run it? I don't see that. So if you said to me, what's the, how's this all going down? I think the way this is going down is the Niners trade back from 31, probably to 40 and take an offensive ta- offensive interior player like Zach Frazier, or maybe a defensive interior player uh, to start off. But I think the, I think they trade back, get an extra pick. With that extra pick, I think they draft Malachi Corley out of Western Kentucky. I think there's a big contingent. There was a big contingent of Niner people that went out there to watch. You're not going to Western. You know, you're not sending a big contingent of people to Western Kentucky unless, unless you really be. think that Malachi Corley is in the crosshairs. Um, so I, I personally think that. Um, what we're going to see is we're going to see Ayuk probably re-signed. The Niners mm-hmm. 
find a way to get an extra pick and, and draft Malachi Corley. And then maybe after June 1st or more, probably more likely next year, I could see the 49ers coming up with some trade for whatever they can get for Debo Samuel. For Debo, Corley, thank you for Corey. We got to find, you know, fulfills potential. I love you, Lawrence. Is your real name Lawrence? That is the name my mother gave me and always <laughs> called me. <laughs> Lawrence, such a great and astute take. I love it. The, the elephant in the room is we're squeezing on B.A. because Debo is overpaid. That's the elephant in the room, okay? And, and nobody can talk about it. And nobody can really bring it up. And nobody can say that the real issue is, is that we really have no problem paying B.A. Actually, the money that he thinks he deserves, that's exactly what, what, he, should, what he should get. But we can't. Because we have this emotional guy who unfollowed us in the middle of his in the middle of his negotiations, and we had to put a little bit. We had to put twenty on ten to to make this guy feel better about the situation. And on top of it, he's Kyle's pet. But the truth is, is that he's overpaid and he's underperformed. And what we can do for you, Brandon, is is that if you would just hold tight, okay, and re-sign. We'll get you your money on the back end. We got to move on from Debo because when we look at it from Brandon is the last guy paid. Yes, he's the last guy that makes the room, the, the, the tab for the receiver room go over 60, 60 million per. But the truth is, is that the real bad juju that relies in that room is Debo's money. We got to move on from that contract. He's overpaid and he shouldn't even be making 28 million this year. That's the real money that needs to happen. And if they're smart, they'll do what they need to do to keep uh BA. And when they get, when, when they can do something with it, move on from Debo. That's what they should really do. But at the same time, there's no advantage to moving uh, Debo before June 1st this year. And really, there's no advantage to moving him after June 1st if you want Debo on the roster to compete. So there's, you know, this is a complicated situation. I, I agree with what you said. I mean, Ayuk is the receiver you want to go long term with. Uh, mm -hmm. Debo's the guy you want to get off of. But you can't get off of him right now in any kind of realistic way. You probably mm -hmm. don't want to get off of him after June 1st because you're trying to win a championship and, and it's all about that. And obviously he could help in that regard. So, but I, I, I think if they could find a way to get Corley um, and especially with the new special teams rules, I think Corley could be an ideal fit for that. Um, and then you maybe you have Debo at the end of the year have and you seen some... Jaheim Bell, Larry? Have you seen yeah, Jaheim Bell? A little bit. Not a lot, though. I, I like Jaheim Bell, man. You can't tell me that that's not Debo with... He's like a big... It's like bigger Debo, but on purpose. Like, you know how Debo gets bigger, but it's because he's out of shape? He just put on weight? This kid actually is 230. All right? He's 6'3", 230. He's not Debo speed. He's not a 4'4 guy. This kid has sure hands. He catches beautiful seam routes. A lot of the stuff that he catches is wheel routes in between the tackles. This kid can block. I'm telling you, bro, Jaheim Bell is somebody that if we picked him up, Debo will be all but non-existent on our team, to be honest with you. He's got a lot of nice traits that I like. I mean, uh, he's a multi-talented player. He's from Valdosta, Georgia, Valdosta High School. He's an mm -hmm. honor roll student. He played both tight end and wide receiver. They also used him on defense. He did suffer an ACL in his high school career, uh, but he helped his high school team reach the quarterfinals in both 2018 and 2019 in the state. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that that's pretty damn good. He also played basketball. Um, you know, he's, he's considered the 17th best athlete in the country by rivals when he was coming out. Uh, ranked as the 38th best player in the state of Georgia. So yeah, there's a lot to like there for sure. You ain't got to pay him twenty eight million dollars a year. Yeah, I'm telling I'll, you, I'll study. He, he was on the fall academic honor roll. I'll study Jaheim Bell and and get back to you on that 